across the country from coast to coast, and believe me, every town has its own rhythm and a story to tell. I'm Sammy Hagar. I'm going to take you on a rock and roll road trip. Woo, let's go. Rock and Roll Road Trip, presented by Mercury Insurance. Now this week we are heading to Bloomington, Indiana to meet up with music icon John Mellencamp. We're going to check out his art studio. He's a very deep person, so things might get a little heavy. Here we are, see my buddy uh, John Mellencamp, and we're gonna jam or we're gonna talk, we're gonna find out what we got in common. It's gonna be great. You just say, now why are we in Indiana on this rock and roll road trip? We are in the home of John Mellencamp. And what you don't know about John, or maybe you do, is that he's not only one of the great songwriters in America, he is also a great artist, a painter. So that makes him a double artist. And we're at his studio and uh, I haven't seen this thing. We'll go in and see it and uh, do a little interview and check John's stuff out. Whoa, this is a real studio. Wow, impressive. An artist lives here, artist works here. This is gonna be great. Maybe John will teach me how to paint. <laughs> So, but I'm gonna prove it on this show. So, <laughs> how you doing, John? Good, good. Thank you for doing this. Thanks for I see me. you're all in your outfit. Like you, uh, is that the way you walk out on stage nowadays? Or? No, no. This is uh, we're in my art studio, so I put on my painting. This is where this is where I paint. Are we gonna paint? Uh, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> if you like. I don't want to ruin your reputation as a painter. These paintings, I'm looking at them like you're really, really serious about painting. It's awesome. I went to uh, New York when I was fresh out of college to go to the New York Art Student League. Uh, and on the way there, I accidentally got a record deal. <laughs> so you were painting before you were writing oh, songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you were writing songs? Yeah. Oh, listen, when I, got my, when I got my first record deal, I didn't even own a guitar. I had been singing in like local rock bands, you know, on the weekend just to make money. and. And uh, so I uh, had a demo tape. I thought, well, if I'm going to be in New York, I might as well just drop these off and see what happens. And I didn't even get back to Indiana. I drove to New York, and I drove back. And by the time I drove back, they'd, this main man at the time was managing Bowie and, and Lou Reed and Martha Hoople and, you know, that whole scene. Wow. And uh, they That called. was early. I mean, I didn't realize you were. Yes, I'm old. Now, I'm older than you. Don't start with me. <laughs> yes, I'm old. Uh, so uh, anyway, they called and uh, they said, "Hey, can you come back tomorrow?" And it's like, "I'm already in Indiana. I can't. Uh, I don't have any money to get back there." And so they said, "Oh, we'll pay for it." So I got on a plane and I flew back. And the New York Art Student League hadn't even got back with me if they would accept me or not. You know, so I already had a record deal, and I, I didn't even know if I got into the painting school I wanted to get into. When I got my first record deal, Sam, I, uh, I had only written like three songs my whole life. The idea of writing a song was like, what? You know, taking care of business is good enough for me. I'm making a living singing, taking care of business, you know, uh, all the songs, you know, I was yeah. in a cover band. So writing songs was never even dawned on me. And that's why my first records were so terrible was because I was actually <laughs> growing up, you know, learning how to write songs in public. Yeah. You know, how many songs you got written? Ten. Okay, let's record them. My first ten fucking songs are on an album. Yeah. You know, it's like it's. it's I did like, the same thing because I just wanted to get out on the road and play in front of people. But, but did see, you, I never want to. Uh, you didn't want to do that. So yeah, yeah, I, I didn't care like about that, that side of it. But, but the writing thing. What do you think your first good song was? I mean, really? I'm still waiting to write it. Oh, yeah, I'm still okay. I'm still waiting to write it. I. Uh, you can't do that to me, John. No, no, I'm serious. I still think that uh, my best work's in front of me as far as songwriting goes. Well, I believe that. That your last record, that 
plain. Plain spoken. Yeah, that, that was deep. How did you start writing good songs? What made you write good songs? I decided a long time ago that I could not be one of these guys. Uh, I didn't want to be competitive. I didn't want to fight and scratch and be a monkey on a string. And let's go out and do one more rousing version of Small Town, shall we? You know, it's just the, the, the reproduction of the creation has never been interesting to me. I've never enjoyed it. I uh, do it because I have to, and it pays my painting habit, <laughs> you know, and, and that's pretty much, you know, uh, where it's been with, and, and I became somebody I didn't like. I have always struggled with the idea of being a monkey on a string and, you know, keeping my own integrity and doing it my way and trying not to follow a path that others had laid. You know, I got some real good advice from a really smart guy when I was real young. He said, John, go where they're not. Do what they're not doing. And then he said, keep it small, but keep it going. And everybody else was trying to become this, you know, this thing, How and I was, can I get? yeah, uh, this yeah. thing, for me, it was like I was trying to withdraw from all of that, but, you know, it's, it's, it's seductive, all of that, you know, and I found myself, you know, I was like, okay, well, fuck it, we're in it, let's just do it, let's try, and then I would always go, what are you doing to you, you know, what are you doing to yourself, what are you trying to prove? You did a good job. Whatever you were doing did a good job because your image and has been solid. You have never looked like, to even to a guy that's in the same business, you know how people can be criticized of each other. You're like, well, I'm better than him, all right? You never look like a monkey on the string. You always really look like you're doing your own thing. With me, it was always like, you know, what are you going to do, take away my birthday? <laughs> so when you have that attitude, there's nothing they can do to you. Yeah. So where's this reputation about being a hard guy to deal with? It's, is that, I can this see is, that's where this, it came from. This Obviously, is, you didn't like the this, business as much as I assumed you did. This, this is it. You know, it's yeah. just, oh, I, listen, I, I used to love, I got sucked in, man. For a while, I was sucked in. During the mid to late 80s, I was sucked in. Those are good times, you've got to admit. I mean, you can have They a lot were for of me, fun. though. They, they were oh, the worst times of my damn, life. John, you missed some of the best. You missed some good shit. <laughs> no, Maybe I did, but... <laughs> No, you did it. You did it, I but would, you didn't enjoy it, I guess. I, I would go into those arenas, and I would literally get nauseous. Because it was like, I don't want to be here. I, I don't want to be here well, acting like, you know, something that I'm not. This is, you know, this is a job. You know, I, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to. I wrote a song called Pop Singer. It says, I never wanted to be no pop singer. never wanted to write no pop song. Never wanted to hang out after the show. And... I caught so much shit for that song because it was just like, man, you're biting the hand that feeds you. And, it's, and, it, and my response was, so what? So what do I care? You know, what? I didn't have anything when I started. I'm like you, man, I went around poor, dirt poor on food stamps, welfare with a baby and playing music thinking I was, I'm okay. It was like, hey, this is fine. You hey, know? listen, if I had a, a motorcycle, a couple guitars uh, and some records, yeah. I was, I was fine. Yeah, I was driven by the love for the music, I think. But, and fame and fortune was strong with me for because I was so poor. When I first got some, I, I got excited. But I just can't believe that that didn't excite you, that all the, the no, fame and the fortune. Applause. Did not make you happy. Okay. Well, it didn't, it, it didn't do what it, was, what it did for other people. I walk out on stage, my mission is to say, I'm gonna make you walk away from here with a big smile on your face, wake up in the morning with a big smile, as long as I can keep that smile on your face, then I did a good job. And I mean, that, that's the road I took. But I'm no, jealous listen. of you. No, 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 listen. I'm jealous listen, of you. Listen, I, I, I'm, I wanna I, be an artist, damn I, it. I'm, I, I'm, ju <laughs> I'm just, you know, if you're charging people money, you've gotta play small time. Yeah. No matter what. No matter whether you want to or you don't want to, you gotta play it. And I get it. I totally get it. They came to hear these songs, you gotta play them. That doesn't mean I have to like it, but that mm -hmm. does mean I have to put every bit of energy that I have into acting like it's the first time I've ever sang the song. And I'm that excited about doing it for these people. I get it. 
But see, you do have a heart, but, John. But, I'm that, telling but, you. but that, but the key word there is act like. What do you like to do besides paint? I like to paint. I like to uh, discover new things. I'm very interested in life. I like to discover uh, people's histories. I like to occasionally go work. I paint basically every day. What I'm interested in is creating something that I can be proud of. You know, and whether it's a song or a painting, and that's what I'm interested well, in. Well, you're a real artist, John. You, you paint pictures in, in a lot of your songs, and I, I think it's connected, and it, and it really it inspired me. Because uh, I'm not a painter. I've, I've never even... Anybody, and you know, look, within a few, within, I have a son that's a fucking excellent painter. He's 21 years old, and he's very thin-skinned, and, you know, he's a very sensitive guy, and he fights all the time. He will fight anybody, any place. I got a son the same way. He'll fight anybody, and he's very thin-skinned, but he's so sensitive that he just, you know, the world is is such a, a rough place on this kid that it's just like he only knows one way to deal with his emotions and that's to fight. But his paintings, I look at him and, and it's, he'll show me one of his paintings and I, it's like, fuck you, man. <laughs> I've been painting my whole life, I can't paint like How that. How long does it take you to paint like a painting like this? Well, this particular, on this one this particular painting just took an afternoon. Yeah. Wait a minute, are you charging $30,000 for that? I'm not charging. <laughs> I'm not charging. John, I'm not charging the. Uh, you know me. I'm gonna wind you up if I can. Uh, the, I, I'm not charging the. I, you know, uh, Bob Dylan came here. Bob and I did a bunch of shows together, and we were up here, and I had all my paintings just stacked around. And Bob's a painter, and uh, he says to me, "Because what are you gonna do with all this stuff?" I said, "I don't know." And he says, "Well, why don't you sell them?" I said, well, "Who want to buy them?" He goes, "Lots of people." He goes, "I sell my stuff." And I went, that's surprising to <laughs> me that, that somebody would buy your stuff, but okay. I want to buy one of your paintings. You think I'm joking? I'm not. I want, I want to be in my, one of my you know, restaurants in Cabo Wabo or someplace. I want to put it up, picture you and I, and put it up on display and let people come and look at it. Why don't I just give you one? Well, I knew you were going to say that. I said, that's why I told my wife, I said, he ain't gonna let me buy a painting. She said, yeah, of course, he's there for sale. Maybe you just buy it for his manager. I said, no, you know, she goes, he ain't gonna let you buy a painting. I said, well, I'll write a check for the amount of, that you want for the painting. No discount, no nothing to Farm Aid or, or local here. I like to give to local community. You know, I got well, food far, banks. Far, and, farm Aid is uh, it's a good one, right? It is a good thing. Yeah. And me and Willie. I'd be and happy I, to do that. Me and Willie and Neil have, we. We've been doing this since 1985. Remember when I did it in 85? Remember that's when I first shook your hand. Yeah, but I But I got, I, I was a bad boy on there. I would love to come back and redeem myself. Will you guys please invite me back? I promise. I went out and said, here's a song for you, you tractor pulling motherfuckers. I, remember I couldn't that. help myself and boom, off went the lights and I, 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 I yeah. suffered for that. I felt so bad. I felt terrible about that. I would love to come back. I think I know the kind of guy you are and I'm, I'm gonna guess. So I'm gonna give you two things, and you're gonna tell me this one or that one, this one or that one, okay? So, <laughs> Picasso or Dolly? Picasso. Ford or Chevy? Chevy. Mm, see, I thought Ford, but okay, if I, had, I, had, I had Picasso down. Uh, Beatles or the Stones? Stones. Me too, see, yeah. I knew this. See, John, I knew this one. I, I once did an introduction in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I think it was for the Love and Spoonful. And Paul McCartney was sitting out here and I had to say, I'm sorry, Paul, but these guys were writing about hot down summer in the city, back of my neck getting dirty gritty, and you were writing about, I want to hold your hand. Really? <laughs> that was in my speech. When we come back, I'm going to play a soulful tune with Mr. Mellencamp. Check it out. Hey, welcome back to Rock and Roll Road Trip with Mr. John Mellencamp. And John chose this song to play, and we don't even know who wrote it, I guess, huh? It's an old traditional song, and uh, I'll do a verse or two, and then you'll do a verse or two, and then uh, we'll see if people like it. We've not, we've not rehearsed this either, because we don't believe in rehearsals. Rehearses work. Rehearsals are for suckers. <laughs> Gambled all around. Delia was a gambling girl. She liked to lay her money down. All the friends I ever had are gone. Dear's dear mother took the 
trip out west When she returned Little Delia had gone to rest All the friends they had had gone Delia's daddy weeped His mama moaned Wouldn't have been so bad If the girl had died at home All the friends they had Cutty's looking high, mm -hmm. Cutty's looking low, Cutty shot poor Dilly down, with his crew 44, all the friends they ever had gone, high up on the housetop, high as I can see. Six feet out of sight. I love that one. All the friends they ever had are gone. Well, the judge says, Cuddy, what's this noise about? About all them rounders just trying to cut me out. It might be my fine Judge says, oh, poor boy You got 99 And all the friends I ever had are gone But he's in a jailhouse Drinking from an old tin cup the last verse together. Yeah. Dear you, oh dear you, how can it, it be? You wanted all those rounders, but you never did me. That's a trip. That looks so old Dutch or something. That just, that's got That's my son, Hud. That's got it. My son, I have one son, Sammy, that was national Golden Gloves champ three years ago. Really? I used to box. You used to box? Yeah. I'm, I'm slow as shit now. <laughs> God, look at all this, John. I think, I think the bigger side you, is you have been much painting much. every day, haven't you? Oh, this is, I've already sold or given away everything. You know, oh, that's badass. It's, you know, the, it's that Libra thing with me. It's like, you, don't give me a choice. Say, yeah, no. I don't want any choice. All right, man. And that's what we have in, con we have man, that in common. It's, it's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I think I'll leave, leave that one out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. No, I, I'm, I'm cool. Right, let's narrow it down. I like that guy a lot. OK, well, let me tell you about that guy. OK. That is a friend of mine named Trevor Golf. He's, he's, like he's like my gay best friend. His dad wrote Charlie's Angels. Uh, he wrote all Humphrey Bogart's movies. And uh, Trevor 
He's never worked a day in his life. This guy right here? This guy right there. Never worked a fucking day in his life. Now, me and him have been friends since 1974. And I, he, he'll come in and go, what are you doing, puppet? <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> You kind of ruined the painting now. What? You know that, John. What, Trevor? What are you doing, puppet? <laughs> so, it was, but it's funny. He's so funny. It, it is, but because he looks so, he looks like a hard-working man. No, he's not. He hasn't fucking looked at a finger his whole life. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm thinking, if you're cool with that, I, I, I like that painting. I really do. Yeah, puppet works. It would work in a restaurant. It's got a vibe, man. Trev. And he would like it. He would like to know that he was hanging in one of your restaurants. Yeah. He would be honored. When we come back, we'll check out my restaurant, El Paseo, where John's painting found a home. We are back at my restaurant, El Paseo, and I'm going to show you around. Here we are. It's a long way from Bloomington, Indiana to San Francisco, California, a little town outside of San Francisco called Mill Valley, California, where I have a restaurant called El Paseo. Trying to find a home for the Melon Camp painting was crazy because uh, it's big and it's weird, but it's cool. So I thought, well, I'll put the damn painting in my restaurant where I can see it whenever I want. So it's over here. You guys want to take a glimpse? Shall we reveal it? Boom! Puppet. So I'm having a plaque made that says that this was given to me by John Mellencamp for my contributions to Farm Aid. You know, it's really cool because one of the great things that this rock and roll road trip has brought into my life is that I've met people that I really didn't know and I got to spend a whole day with them and talking about things and deep and playing a song with them. And Mellencamp is a prime example of someone that I've never got to know. I've met him a few times here and there. We came up through the same times. We're, we're really cut from the same mold. And he's, uh, he's become my friend. It's like, it, it's, I, it's one of my um, favorite things that has happened since I started Rock and Roll Road Trip is Mellencamp. John has texted me some of the coolest things and caused me to write a song I sent it to him and he said, keep swinging, buddy. He calls me young man. I'm older than him. Don't let him get away with that. But when I bought this painting from him, I'm saying, I'm going to put it up in my restaurant in my house or something. He's going, yeah, he's giving me that look. Kind of like he's not really believing me. Like he's thinking, I'm just trying to pull a gimmick. So I framed it and I put it up. I took a picture, sent it to him. And he said, a man's word is his bond. Think Farm Aid thanks you, and I thank you, young man. Keep slugging, right? Or something like that. And I could tell that he really was touched the fact that I put it up. And uh, he, he just, I feel close to the guy. And thanks to Rock and Roll Road Trip. What pisses you off, John? Everything. <laughs> I hope you guys got that. That's profound. Everything makes me mad. Damn near.